Welcome to this demonstration uh, in model vision of the normalized source strength. This new work done by uh, Dave Clark and others at CSIRO. Uh, normalized source strength has a number of advantages for explorers as a new processing technique, uh, which is very useful for uh, compact sources and uh, intrusive pipes in particular. It is similar to the analytic signal, and, but has quite a few advantages over the analytic signal. By way of example, here's uh, the primary parameters that we're currently computing in model vision. The normalized source strength is the central image here, and it shows the results for a theoretical model of a sphere. And you can see that the contours and the colors are perfectly centered. The co-inclination angle provides information on the magnetization direction. Now we'll go on to explain this in more detail. The normalized source strength is computed from eigenvectors derived from the tensor of the magnetic field. The tensor is shown here, and the eigenvectors can be derived from that lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3. For more detail, you can see uh, Becky and Clark's paper. Uh, but the important thing is we have curvature information in the tensor field, and this tensor can be derived using the FFT filter processing of a total magnetic intensity grid. Those filters are all available inside model vision. Now the normalized source strength in this formula mu is derived from the three eigenvectors. The co-inclination angle phi is derived from the second eigenvector and the normalized source strength and has a range from 0 to 180 degrees. It is actually a useful indicator if the magnetization vector m is magnetization of the target and the observation point on the surface where you've got the magnetometer, the angle between that line and the magnetization is the co-inclination angle. At some point, this vector will be aligned with a measurement point. Illustrate that here, where we end up with a null co-inclination angle, a zero value. That line between the low and the sphere gives us the not only the direction of the magnetization, but once we have the depth, we can actually work out what the magnetization direction is. So release 15 of model vision, we compute the normalized source strength, the second eigenvalue, and the co-inclination is done in forward modeling. We can use it in inversion, and it's supported as an FFT grid processing, where from the TMI, we can directly derive these three parameters. They can also be resampled onto the lines for specialized processing. Here's an example for the sphere in more detail, where we've got the co-inclination angle phi. We have the location of the sphere. This gives us the declination. And the distance from here to here and the depth would give us information on the magnetization direction. When we make it a little bit more complex, here we have a sphere in the middle and we have four surrounding vertical pipes, we see that we get a lot of variation in the field. But even for the pipes, we can see that the low appears to the north. Uh, the best results occur for the, the sphere. When we introduce linear features, we get less useful information from the co-inclination angle. Um, that's not true for normalized source strength. Uh, so for compact sources such as a sphere or a pipe, the co-inclination angle can provide useful information on magnetization direction. So what are the characteristics of the normalized source strength? It is weakly dependent on the magnetization vector. It doesn't require reduction to poles, similar to the analytic signal. It's excellent for pipe identification. Noise is, is very low. It has good geological coherence. So let's now run an example in model vision. The normalized source strength filter has been added to the filter menu. You do that by going to the grid filters, 
and then choose the option at the bottom that is called Normalize Source Strength. The options are quite straightforward. You choose the input grid channel that you're going to process, in this case total magnetic intensity. It will prefix the output grids because there are three grids generated, normalized source strength, lambda 2, and the co-inclination angle phi. You've got control over the amount of padding that is done, uh, and it goes through the steps 1, running the uh, gradient, full gradient tensor, then the eigenvector analysis, and then it outputs normalized source strength phi and lambda 2. If you want to look at the tensor channels, you can save those as an option that will generate uh, six channels for the output. We apply the filter. Now it first has to compute the full tensor for the grid. Takes a while to go through that and then from the tensor components it generates the various channels. Now I've saved that one previously. This is the normalized source strength derived from that and it will look very similar to the analytic signal. If we want to look at some of the other channels that were generated, over the top we could load the lambda 2 eigenvector. It's fairly difficult to interpret in its raw form without further processing. And we can add the co-inclination angle, phi. Also in its raw form, a little bit difficult to interpret. So the most useful parameter for pure geological interpretation is the normalized source strength uh, channel here to the right. We can zoom in. The Black Hill norite is actually this reversely magnetized anomaly here. So I'm going to zoom in a little around this area just to have a look at it in more detail. We'll then do the same. For the normalized source strength. And here we can see that it's isolated the uh, reversely magnetized anomaly quite effectively. Now let's look at the relationship or comparison of the normalized source strength and the analytic signal. Uh, both are weakly dependent on the magnetization vector and neither requires a reduction to pole. Now the analytic signal is derived from the horizontal gradients of the total field and the vertical gradient of the total field. Whereas the normalized source strength is actually derived from the full tensor. And that, that, that is the gradients of each of the components and cross components. And as such has a lot more information present in it. And we'll, we'll only see that when we go on to the comparisons. Here's a comparison uh, of the total magnetic intensity, the normalized source strength as computed by model vision, and the analytic signal. And first impressions, they look very similar. When you look closer, you will start to see uh, that the continuity, the geological continuity of the normalized source strength is in general much better. Here's the example of the Black Hill norite anomaly a uh, reversed anomaly. This is the normalized source strength and this is the analytic signal. The analytic signal tends to break up a lot more across the anomaly whereas there's generally more coherence across the, um, the target. Here's another example from Dubbo in New South Wales. Uh, again the left shows the total magnetic intensity, the normalized source strength and the analytic signal you'll see the coherency of the linear features significantly improved in the normalized source strength. Uh, most of the pipe-like bodies have similar uh, appearance and the coherence in uh, the broader bodies also generally improved. It really starts to show its advantage when you get down to details, particularly in quiet areas we have this basin in this region, the total magnetic intensity. And there's reasonable coherence throughout the basin in the normalized source strength, but you see it start to break up in the analytic signal. Also, continuity is generally better in the uh, normalized source strength.
Here's an example from an intrusive complex. Uh, not a huge difference between the two, but generally speaking, the continuity for the normalized source strength uh, is seen to be better. Now, some of the things that you can do with normalized source strength is look at combining the different parameters to see how they image in RGB ternary displays. The one on the left here it has combines the normalized source strength, the co-inclination angle, and the second uh, eigenvector amplitude and it's using a shadow of the vertical component. The same similar image on the, where we're using an edge filter, a plateau filter from PA uh, with a shadow of the tilt filter combining the different components to see what stands out geologically. And these features start to stand out quite well using the ternary display methodology. Here's an example from Broken Hill. Um, where we've got quite contrasting areas of, of geology. Generally speaking, the continuity of the finer features is improved in the normalized source strength. Zooming in in more detail, you start to see this continuity in the finer features along the, the edges of, of uh, the, the detail. So geological continuity will probably be the strongest benefit from using a normalized source strength um, compared with the analytic signal. Here's an example for Broken Hill where we've used the normalized source strength, block filter and tilt filter in a pseudo-magnetic lithology type of image using a ternary RGB with a shadow from the tilt filter. Here we've just draped the uh, ternary RGB image over the terrain to see the correlation between terrain, terrain related features and the magnetic responses. That's a brief summary of the normalized source strength and its use in geological interpretation, has benefits over the analytic signal, and it's very easy to run in model vision.